This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Scott Wells for the Magic Word Podcast.com. And if this sounds a little bit different as far as the acoustics, that's because I am in my car. I'm not at the airport. Uh, I'm not waiting for my magic carpet. I'm actually driving because I'm on my way to Austin, Texas for the Magic Collectors Expo. They had this in Las Vegas last year, and this year it's going to be in Austin. And uh, this is Wednesday, and since it's only a few hours' drive from my home, I thought I would uh, just take off this way and that way I've got my own wheels and everything too but uh, that means of course I didn't stop by Dunkin Donuts although I did stop by and get a kolache and uh, here to talk about the kolaches is my traveling companion today <laughs> please welcome Harriet Jacobson hey Harriet hi Scott <laughs> <laughs> love those kolaches had no idea what they were well, explain to people what a kolache is oh it's this luscious dough yeah and the one, the first one I had was had spinach and mushrooms and feta mm-hmm. and a surprise dried tomato. You bet you didn't know this. No, I didn't have dried no, tomatoes. The, no, that was the red okay. on top of it. And they heated it up, and I, I can't, I, I don't know what to compare it to. It was yummy. They, they look kind of like rolls uh, yes. when you go to a restaurant, but it's uh, more of a sweet bread or sweet uh, Hawaiian oh. bread kind of a, a bread. Uh, and my ha- I had one that was a sausage and cheese, a kolache. Uh, and uh, then I also had a uh, cherry and cream cheese kolache. And you had, for a sweet one, you had a what? I had, a it was a cream cheese one yeah. with, an, and it was a sweet cream cheese, but the dough, you know, the dough around, but it, it's yummy. I had said to you when we talked and I was in Michigan, you were dry, you had driven to um, Austin yeah. and you said, I stopped and got a kolache. And I said, what is a kolache? And I said, when you get down here, I'll take you by and we'll surprise you. Yeah. And you're learning what blue bonnets are. Oh, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. The, all along the uh, drive, the expressway, these little um, blue flowers um, along the way, and also the Indian paint, paintbrush. The Indian paintbrush right, right. were the like a dark orange, orange or crimson, right, right. but they're beautiful. But you said you educated me again. You told me that Lady Bird Johnson that was one of her pet projects. Right, beautification of America's highways, in particular Texas, right. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was all our highways. Yeah, I think mostly, but uh, mostly Texas. But I think she had a nationwide thing when she was first lady. Oh, okay. That's good. Well, there, it's it's beautiful, and I it's just the right time of year. And you never heard of ZZ Top, and so I put no. in Lagrange. No. Ha 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 ha. So <laughs> we drove no. through Lagrange. <laughs> she got to hear that for the first time. It's been a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> so we are on our way to this. <laughs> this we're talking about magic. So we're going to the Magic Expo, and you've got some jewelry. You got BJW. You're going to be selling some stuff too, right? I am going to be selling some stuff starting tomorrow. Very cool. Gay's going to be meeting us. Gay Blackstone will be here. In a couple uh, hours. That's right. Uh, we're going to, first of all, stop by Kent Cummings, Kent Cummins' home and his museum. I'm going to record an episode of a podcast, which will be upcoming in the future with him. And then once we get to Austin and check into the Sheridan Hotel, we're going to catch the bus at 4 o'clock to go to the... Uh, Ransom Center, University of Texas, and if you go back and listen to uh, one of the podcasts, I had uh, chatted with the uh, curator of uh, the museum, and particularly the one of the largest Houdini collections in the world, so we're going to go see that, and then go for a barbecue dinner, uh, and to see Astros Follies featuring my favorite magician, Ray Anderson. And you, More food? More food. More barbecues tonight. But you've not had good barbecues. You have some good barbecue tonight, okay. too. Well, you're hanging with Scott Wells. I mean, I, I like to eat. I know. I told you the <laughs> last time when we were in L.A. at Gay's for the filming of Masters of Illusion. Right. I, that was a month ago. It took me a month to lose the weight. And now you're going to be pounding that, it back that, on. That I put on following you and Gay around. <laughs> Which, by the way, that was a wonderful dinner we had with John Gaughan. Oh, and, uh, yeah. that was. That amazing. was that, that cornbread. That cornbread was oh. to die for. That was amazing. 
Uh, and then, but that's why I never forget that famous thing that uh, John said. Oh, right. Because I said, I think I could die. And he said, don't die before you have the meatloaf. And that's I right. thought, what? <laughs> that is a saying for a t-shirt. It's a slogan. Don't die before you have the meatloaf. That's a, <laughs> that's a way to live life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're going to be having a great uh, convention coming up. I have been working with Trixie Bond also, who is going to be giving a presentation on uh, magicians from Texas. She has known and worked with with and grown up with, with their father being a magician as well, but people whose lives have intersected with hers, like Walter Blaney, Bev Bergeron, Mark Wilson, uh, so many others, uh, Presley Guitar, Bob, uh, 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 I've forgotten, uh, Bob White, uh, and uh, Billy Cyrus, and a lot of people who you may not know, but she's got a great presentation, and, and I mentioned Kent Cummins, I believe Kent is also going to be giving a presentation over the weekend, uh, there are a lot of things that are going to be happening, so be sure you come back each day to hear an update on the convention, uh, also Chip Romero is going to be talking, I believe, about, uh, 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 of course, Doug Henning, and speaking of which, we uh, will be going to FISM later this year, and Chip will be giving a big presentation up there uh, on Doug Henning, who was a Canadian, of course. And uh, you'll be joining us up in FISM also, is that right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, I wouldn't miss that. It'll be my first FISM. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. Well, what are you looking forward to at this convention? I mean, just... You, you know, I didn't... Although we've been in... Michael and I and, you know, Matthew were involved in magic for many, many years. I didn't really understand or know the history of magic. And um, Gay has asked me to go with her, and we've had the jewelry for sale at many collectors' meetings through the last few years. And um, it, it's very interesting to me. Now, to learn the history of things I've known and have learned, seen through the years. Well, you've gotten so involved, you're actually the ambassador oh, of the American Museum of Magic in Marshall, Michigan. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you were so busy. <laughs> I was so busy living it. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming history. <laughs> right, right. Becoming history. And his making history. And ma you're right. That's you're right. right. So here we are, again, just uh, riding in the countryside and uh, uh, going to Austin in Texas, and it's beautiful hill country, and blue bonnets to the left and right of us with Indian paintbrushes, and a beautiful day. So we will, you got Can something I, else? Yeah, 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 and my cookbook. Oh, okay. I, I yeah, I keep, I keep forgetting. We're coming, if you, if you promised me a recipe and you haven't sent it to me, um, I am going to resend out some links in the next when I get home after the convention because um, it is coming to an end and I do need more recipes. And for those of you who are wondering what she's talking the, oh, about. Thank you. It's, it's, go ahead. She's putting together a recipe book of uh, recipes from magicians. It doesn't matter if you're well known or not or if you're just getting started in magic or if you're a chef or if you're not but if you have a special or favorite recipe or it might have been a family recipe or something that you enjoy I don't care if it's a it's, if it's pancakes or hamburgers or some way that you make it that might be different uh, she would like to have that recipe to put in this book of magic res or rather recipes by magicians as well as a photo and some other stuff I need the photo yeah so uh, to get more information, you can contact Harriet at, what's your email? Harriet, H-A-R-R-I-E-T dot Jacobson, J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N at gmail.com. And I'll send you the link that gives you all the information I need. There you go. That's what you need. So as I said, we're on our way and we will catch you guys on the other side once we get to Austin. We've got uh, a lot of fun and packed evening, which, as I just uh, reiterated to you. So... I uh, will see you shortly. That was Harriet Jacobson. <laughs> Scotty out. <laughs>arrived at the uh, Sheridan Hotel in downtown Austin, and the convention is about to begin. I'm at the registration desk here with uh, the organizer, Bill Smith. How is it going, Bill, so far? Well, it's a little hectic, <laughs> which is a why a lot of people's good. flights are delayed, So, but we'll make it. But You see Andy Greggett also had a little problem well, with Well, he the had car. a little card problem, and he's my, you know, he's our biggest dealer, but right. he's at the Chevy dealer right now getting the car, the van fixed. He'll be here. How many and, dealers have we got? Uh, Fifteen. Okay. So it's good, but... Yeah, in about two hours, we take the bus, go over to uh, to the Ransom Center. So 
It's going to be fun. Have you seen the Houdini collection before? I was, no, but I was just there yesterday. Okay, there the first time. Yeah, pretty cool. It's pretty great. Have they brought out some special stuff just for they us? They did, because yesterday, yeah, and then but yesterday it was Ken Trombley and Bruce Everbook and mm-hmm. Gabe Fahuri and Mike Katie. A few of the, like, really stout, you know, serious yeah, collectors. Serious collectors. Yeah. And so they pulled out a little bit more. They're kind of limited to what they can do. They've only got so much room, Exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So. But awesome. anyways... I got to get back to work. I know you do. All right. <laughs> Let you go. See you Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. We'll talk to you later. This is Bill Smith, Scotty Out. The uh, first activity of the convention was to go to the Ransom Center and also then to hear just a stellar speech that was given, or lecture, I should say. It was given by Dr. Eric Colary, and here he is, Eric. Hey, good to see you, man. It's really good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. You're looking fantastic. Oh, it's, this, is, this is my element. This is, these are the people that... I can see by your smile. Oh, well, you just, this, you're living it. Living this, the dream. I mean, we have amazing collections here, and if it's just me and the collections, I anthropomorphize them. They don't get they get sad if they don't get visited. Yeah. And this is a group of people that really appreciate them, and, and right. it, nothing makes me happier than connecting them with That's the That's why I'm glad I got just a moment of your time, because yeah. I, I know that you want to kind of go and revel no, in what most all the people yeah. here who do love this kind of a thing. And I know over the last couple of years that we've been so enclosed and not yeah. able to do anything. And yeah. So now you really get a... I mean, we were going to be doing the TAOM, for an example, but yeah. then it was limited, and then they couldn't do it at all. Yeah. Uh, because new, of... New outbreaks, and Right, yeah. exactly. But now we've got everybody here, about yes. 160 people or something. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And we've been planning for this for, for well over a year and contingency plans if if we couldn't get everybody in because of COVID and, mm-hmm. and all that. So I'm thrilled that it actually... At the last one. Now, are there any together. restrictions at all now as far as people coming in or do you have limitations? Or? We do have some limitations still in the reading room, but it's uh, things have really opened up. We're, we're, we're back open now uh, six days a week. Uh, so expanded hours, uh, the galleries are open, yeah. and everything's free, so people can come uh, really any day of the week, they can access the reading room, they can come into the to the programs, they can go into the galleries, right. uh, it's, it's always free and open to the public. And the lecture that you gave this afternoon was something we had talked about at length yes. uh, during the podcast, so if people want, didn't get a chance to come to the convention and hear this, I'd say go back into the episode and listen to yes. that one that uh, we did. It was so. uh, such a treat to be able to, to <laughs> chat with you again. I miss you. It's good to see it's, you. It's good seeing you as well. This has just been fantastic. I have never been here. So this is oh my, my first. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So this is a new There's thing. no excuse. We no. need to get you back more yeah. often. Well, Every, this is only a few <laughs> hours away Houston, Absolutely. You know, you know, absolutely. I should come more often. <laughs> this has been. Uh, so, and some of the exhibits you got right now, you said you got the James Joyce. I mean, it's not just, of yes. course, we think as magicians. Oh, absolutely. Here, but my goodness. Yeah. Yes. So on permanent display, we always have the Gutenberg Bible. We have the oldest photograph taken from a camera. There's usually Gutenberg Bible here is one of five. One of five anywhere uh, in the United States and and 21 complete anywhere in the world. Uh, So it's an extraordinary thing to have. It's always on permanent display. Uh, We have a a big exhibit through uh, June, I believe, of uh, uh, James Joyce and the making of Ulysses. Uh, We have a display right now on David Foster Wallace on old maps and uh, the Nobel Prize winning author uh, Isaac Besheva Singer, Mm -hmm. all of whom have their papers here at the the Red Sox Center. What have you learned, going back full circle for Magic Reducement, anything new since we last talked? I mean, because we talked a lot at length about the... Uh, the, the bookcase, and yes. then we, you had some more things over there. But anything new on Houdini that you've learned, or uh, well, right now, uh, thanks to John Cox, uh, I had, uh, right upstairs on, on a very temporary display. It's coming down tomorrow. Uh, there's uh, the magician, German magician for Kell. Uh, we have a small piece of paper that uh, apparently was in for, for Kell's uh, dress suit jacket at the time that he died. And, and according to his widow, it was the last thing that Frickell ever wrote. Wow. And Houdini has a note to this effect at the top of this piece of paper. But it's uh, hard to read, and it's in German. So right now we're, we're currently crowdsourcing this over Twitter to see if anybody can read it and translate it for us. Uh, so that'll be an, uh, a fun discovery once maybe somebody's already gotten it. I haven't checked my, so why, my Twitter in a bit. Why are, is it going to be coming down tomorrow on such a short exhibit? Uh, it's coming down tomorrow... Uh, mainly because it's a it's uh, it's not in a place where we normally have uh, displays, but we wanted to have something for this this amazingly big group uh, that's here today. I, I didn't want to just show them things on on us yeah. on a projector. So yeah. there's a, a handful of items from the collections. That's on great, display. Well, Eric. Thank you very much My for pleasure. for doing this and putting this out and for hosting this uh, wonderful event that it's, we are so fortunate to get to see. It's so, it's you. a treat. It's my pleasure. Always. And you're always welcome. Thanks again. Yeah. Appreciate that. So from the Magic Word Podcast, that was Dr. Eric Colleri. Scotty. So we're now upstairs and kind of looking around some of the amazing artifacts they have displayed for us here at the Ransom Center. 
and one of the artifacts that's on the display is Lance Burton. The yeah. magician used to be known. <laughs> <laughs> that was a wonderful lecture that we just heard, wasn't it? Wow. I loved it, all the history of the Houdini and the collection. But you know what? I was talking to Chip Romaro. He hated it. I said, Chip, why didn't you like the lecture? He said, the guy never mentioned Doug Henning one time. <laughs> Now, I know you're a listener also of the podcast. I've had yes. you on the podcast in the past. And so uh, tomorrow night is going to be our uh, Magic and Martini Thursday night. We're nice. Going to be, so you're going to hopefully join us. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. I'd love to. I'd love as to join as, you guys. As long as there's no drinking. <laughs> there's no, you, as long as there's no drinking, I'm happy to join in. Because you and Fielding are going Fielding. to be talking tomorrow night. That's right. we got to talk tomorrow night at, uh, about this uh, sh- show we did 40 years ago. And that was the... Uh, that was the... Uh, for, uh, uh, USA Africa. for Africa. Aid thing. Yeah, it was the uh, Stars of Magic concert for Hunger in Africa. And who all was part of that show? That was a show that uh, we. That was back when they had the in the mid '80s. They had the, maybe 1985. I want to say they had the famine over in Africa, over in Ethiopia, and the the singers all got together and recorded that we are the world. We the world. Yeah. And. Uh, and Michael Jackson and everybody. Michael was on Jackson, uh, Paul McCartney was on it, Bruce Springsteen, everybody. Mm-hmm. Every every great musical artist was on that one song. And and uh, we saw that and Fielding and I and we said why can't uh, why can't magicians do something like that? So we put together this show and it was at the Tropicana Hotel where I was working at the Follies Brashear. And uh, we had Harry Anderson was the MC. We had Doug Henning. We had Siegfried and Roy. We had Harry Blackstone Jr., Max Maven. Uh, we had Jeff McBride. Uh, you know, it's escaping me now, but it, it was the greatest lineup ever. And Fielding. And me and Fielding, and it was a it was a fantastic night of magic. And it was sold out, and we raised $20,000 to go to USA for Africa. 20000 that's quite a bit back then, too. Yes. Yeah. And so was there a video made of that evening? Yes. We had a, I set up, I had a camcorder, and we set it up just for archival purposes. Mm-hmm. So so we've, we've taken that video and had it condensed down. Yeah. Because it was a two-hour show. Mm-hmm. So I think it's been condensed down to like 40 minutes. So okay. so basically you see one trick from all the Each person, Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we're going to show that and... Give oh, a little, nice. little just history. Kind of a running narration of that, then. Yeah, I get, we'll, uh, we'll we'll introduce it and show it, and then maybe take some questions yeah. afterwards. So, but it was looking a, forward to that. I really am. Fun, it should be some fun. It was a fun. It was a fun show. And a one-off, a, one time, never to be repeated. One time, thing. that was it. And yeah, I I can't remember in recent history where you had every every big name in magic, you know, all together at one place like that. Before and or after, I can't either think of yeah. something. That was a seminal point in history. You're right. Yeah, but that, that was a really it was a it was a really seminal point in in popular culture too with the whole USA for Africa and then Bob Geldof uh, did that uh, Live Aid. That's right, you know, Live Aid concert. was a live show, but that that was after. That was it was Bangladesh, though, wasn't it, or something? I'm or not. That? I'm not sure. It, it, my memory of the whole they all kind of blend together, yeah, but right. but I remember it was Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie wrote the song "We Are the World," mm-hmm. and then. They got all the artists to come over right after the Grammy Awards. They were all in L.A. for the Grammy Awards. And then after the show, they all came over to a studio and they recorded the song. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's going to be fun then tomorrow night to uh, hear that and see some of the video as you talk about that, too. Well, thanks very much. And also, I want to uh, uh, publicly thank you also. So we have our newest donor. we got another friend of the Magic Ward. Thank you for your donation. My pleasure. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> some of the Magic Ward podcast. That was the magician known used to be known as Lance Burton. <laughs> Scotty yeah. So we're now on the bus, and we're heading back from the Ransom Center, and uh, how fortuitous is it of me to sit next to Mike Cave? Hey there, Mike. Hey, hi, everybody. So we are uh, about to go have some barbecue and then go see uh, Esther's Follies, which you have seen before, I know. I have never seen before. Oh, you are in for a treat. I, one of the main reasons I came here was to see Esther's Follies. And Ray Anderson, the show. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. I, I have been told... And the people weren't laughing when they said it. They said, this is the best magic show in America. I think so. 
So. Ray's my favorite magician. And wow. It's amazing. I mean, I've, I've seen that. a lot, and he's great. So I'm really excited to see it because I know Ray, and he's a great guy. And so. Yeah. I'm excited that you're. Yeah, yeah. They'll be getting to experience this through I'm other a, people's I'm eyes a virgin, for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> You're also going to be a dealer. Are you going to be giving a presentation or anything this week? I am going to be interviewing Kathy Daniel. Do you know Kathy Daniel? Not personally. Well, I met Kathy when I was 16 years old, and she lives very near to me, so I see her all the time. I've known her almost my whole life, and she was married to John Daniel, and when I was a young Long Beach Mystics, all of us guys thought that John Daniel was the great illusionist of our time. Classy, beautiful, beautiful assistants, costumes, sets. The props were magnificent. Uh, it was like a review show, but magic. And so he was the guy. Where did he tour? Was it up and down the West Coast? Or? No, he would go into, like, casino. Uh, he would work at Lake Tahoe, or he went down to uh, the Carillon Hotel in Miami Beach in 1970 for a long run. He worked in Puerto Rico, and then he quit. Hmm. And that's why there is a generation of magicians that don't know the name. I really don't, because I, I was thinking uh, John Daniel in England, who had the uh, magic TV show. Was that his name? Paul Daniels. No, not Paul Daniels, but neither was there John somebody that had a, uh, the World of Magic uh, series. John Fisher? Fish John Fisher. That's totally who, okay. different. Yeah, no, that's totally who I, different. In my mind, that was what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, so John was a great magician, but it's it's funny. John got out of magic, I mean, stopped being a professional magician, and started collecting trains, model trains, and became the president of the train association and the biggest train collector out there. Then got out of that and got into carousel horses and became the biggest collector of carousel horses and the president of the carousel. Gee, he doesn't do anything just halfway. Not halfway. <laughs> uh, and, and on and on. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but I always hung around for the magic. And so I'm going to interview Kathy, and you're going to learn all about, I'm excited about their her. show and about their... Because John died, I assume, a while back? Yes, he died a few years back. He was uh, very, very close friends with Virgil and Julie, ended up getting Virgil and Julie's entire show. Oh. So I was around for all of that. I actually bought John's show, Shazam show, from him 40 years ago. Were you planning on no. touring? Is I what will, it is. I will tell collector. the story tomorrow, and it's a, cr a ridiculous story. I had no interest in any of it, but he said, well, I have a manuscript by Dante, uh, and it's at the bottom of that pile of red trunks, and if you'll buy the show, I'll give you that manuscript. And I bought the show, and he never found the manuscript. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably dug through every inch of oh, it. Oh, believe me. Yeah. I'm still digging, believe me. <laughs> So anyway, so was, how many years did he perform actually? Oh well, he's the one that built the first modern thin model sawing in half in 1957. So he was performing in the late 50s. He was his own design, so he was a creator and inventor too. He was a co-owner with Owen Magic with Carl oh, Owen for that. years. Okay. So he has an amazing career in magic. His first wife was Irene. Daniel, who ended up marrying Bill Larson, Princess Irene Larson. Wow, I didn't, okay. And the most amazing fact of all is that John's first wife, Irene, and John's second wife, Kathy, were the dearest of friends, always, mm -hmm. which I think is pretty rare. That doesn't happen very no. often, most of those kinds of relationships. No. So, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing. So that's going to be tomorrow. And there's a book out, I think, also. Did you write this about um, John Daniel? Um, I wrote, well, he's he has a big chapter in my Sawing in Half book. Mm -hmm. The whole story of the thin model sawing. So he's in there. And I'm working on another book. I can't let this sawing subject go. Uh, and it's a deep, deep dive into the thin model sawing. So there's going to be a lot more about John and uh, Kathy. So there's going to be a chapter two or a book two to be a companion guide? or It's just actually a companion guide to a previous book I did called The Conference Illusions. And that was the book where I wrote up all the illusions that I had performed at the Los Angeles Conference on Magic History. Oh, okay. But since that book was for, for, uh, published, I've done three additional illusions at the conference. 
Carter the Great Spirit Cabinet, uh, The Birth of a Pearl, and John Daniel's Thin Model Sewing. Okay. So I'm just going to wrap up that with these three last illusions, but I have a ton of material on them. Now, you know how long it takes to write and publish a book, so when do you think, realistically, that should come about? Well, the Spirit Cabinet chapter is done. The Birth of a Pearl chapter is done. And the only chapter left is the Thin Model Sewing. But in the past year, uh, the, the guy who actually invented the Thin Model Sewing was a guy in Istanbul, Turkey, named Zadi Sungar. Nobody knows Zadi Sungar. But I'm you now. Get him in the book, though. I've heard yes, him. he's in the book. But I'm now best friends with Zadi Sungar's 81 year old daughter. 81 year old And daughter. she has wow. provided me with amazing information about her father and about that trick and other tricks. So this chapter is expanding way beyond the normal bounds. So it should, I mean, if I'd stay home and work on it, it could be done sooner than later. Which means by Christmas of 24? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It'll come out when it's done. When it's done with them, that's, yeah. that's a good point. Uh, and I assume that you have the Malini book. I know Gabe's going to be talking about the new Max Malini book. I got mine this afternoon. I just got mine. I had a pre-order on that, and then, uh, it's it's sitting right next to my sawing book. There's oh, a couple of things good. to read. <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> that lot. So I appreciate it. Well, you're doing a lot of, uh, of good here, and I know you're going to see a great show here a little bit later. I can't wait. Good talking to you. All right. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> so for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Mike Cavey. Scott Young. Well, I'm about, well, I have, but I came to his uh, place uh, of business, and he gave me a tour. We had a real nice uh, talk, and yeah. I did a video. The video on YouTube is still getting a lot of hits. And so, by the way, the, for those of you who have already jumped into this part of the conversation, we're now at Esther's Follies, waiting in line for barbecue. Then with Pat Hazel and with John Gone. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Together. I okay. remember being at John Shop so many years ago, before or after a haircut at Dean Dills. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And... When I got there, uh, I remember those parrots chasing me around the shop like, like guard dogs. I mean, they and you were like, eh, just stay back a little bit, just you know. But they were, they were aggressive uh, parrots. You well, still have parrots? No, unfortunately, I don't. Okay. <laughs> the Max uh, died when he was ninety-one, and uh, in Luther, uh, we had to give to a guy that had three or four other macaws. And he's real happy now. And I get emails from Luther every once in a while, so he's having oh, pictures and telling you how the yeah he looks good. His his feathers yeah. look great, and he was he's very happy. So, what brings you guys here to this collectors? I know John, you have done a lot of shows here than the collectors in the past. Well, yeah, just to see good old people. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. That's great. Yeah. And Post pandemic, you know, retouching with humanity. Yeah. That's right. And uh, Pat, you're going to be giving a presentation. You're performing Friday night. I'm, I'm emceeing or hosting Friday night show with a Brad, uh, Nick Lewin, Brad Henderson, Mark Sue Holstein. Yeah, it's going to be you know a star-studded event, I, I guess. And so on Facebook, we saw where you were had done a show up in uh, actually a lot of places, but in uh, back in hometown in Omaha. So how and how did everything go there? Uh, just, just fine. Still waiting for them to pay me. That's how. That's how show business works, especially from your hometown. It's kind of guy. Like, oh, we'll get to him. No, no, no. It's fine. Uh, it's a beautiful new theater, though. If they're ever up in that area, the Benson Theater is now. Chip Davis from Mannheim Steamroller put a lot of technology in there and that sort of thing. So it's got great state of the state of the art. Speaking of getting paid, that's another thing. In fact, if you go back, I think the podcast episodes you and I had done. Uh, go ahead, John. Yeah, go ahead. That that the. Uh, <laughs> you had uh, been performing with uh, Terry Seabrook in Lubbock, and you lost oh your check. Oh, my goodness. That was a hugely long time ago. That's it right. was a New Year's, New Year's Eve, Eve, I think. And you lost your check and you ended up pounding it in your suitcase or something. Uh, I, I did many. It was many weeks later that I found it in a folder. <laughs> but they scoured the club after New Year's Eve, which was the floor was full of confetti and the popped balloons. And, the you know, there was a... A lot of no check. Patron, no check. <laughs> Everywhere we look. I just remember Terry Seabrook making fun of you. Yes. Because <laughs> you were both staying with me in my house, but you came back to Midland. Yeah, it was super fun. It yeah. was a really fun visit. I remember also, of course, we were 
something about the Winter Olympics might have been going on. Well, you were in the hot tub with us, uh, Kathy and I, because I just remember there being ice on your hair. Okay, that I don't recall, but okay. it could have been any day of the week that could have happened. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, uh, before we wrap up, uh, so I know you have seen Ray Anderson's show here at the uh, Masters yeah, Follies. It's the greatest. It is the best. Yeah. Ray is such a has such attention to detail, and it's a tightly, tightly wound show with comedy and music and magic all intertwined and it's a and it's fresh it's always fresh right up to the moment yeah, yeah. because whatever's happening in today's news they've now have made it a, a satire out well they have a nice system where they write every week that all the performers are writers and they right. write songs and right uh, yeah so it's really cool fun to watch and so as to your podcast on uh, creativity and captivity yes. tell me something about that well, we people just, can listen to it. We've had tons. Of, it's on everything. It's on yeah. Spotify and Apple and Audible, whatever they watch or listen to. Yeah. I guess. While you're there looking at any of these places to find the Magic Word podcast, also look for Cap- Creativity, Creativity Captain. Right. And I did. I did a an hour with Ray Anderson. I yeah. did. Uh, I heard Hom- that. Homer okay. Homer Lee Wag is coming up. Okay. Uh, Chris Kenner is coming up. Lots of lot of folks. So, so it was a, uh, uh, a very interesting uh, podcast that uh, Pat has because he's talking a lot about the um, about just that about creativity and with different people like the guy the president of Pixar and other kinds of things. Not just magicians by any means. No, no, no. It's lots of different disciplines and. Like I talked to one of the Go Go's this week, and I talked to a woman that's a master chocolatier that did all the uh, chocolates for the White House when Obama was there, and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a, a lot of different people, but I find that the creative process is transferable. So talking to writers, musicians, filmmakers, and animators, artists, performing yeah. people who are, have, are creative. Yeah. yeah, and your son is involved with it too, isn't he? Uh, not this one that's here with me tonight. Okay. But there is one of them that's editor on, on some episodes. I thought I had heard his name when you were saying it. The Tucker, yeah. He's he's quite good as an audio editor. So I'm. it's kind of fun to be able to do that. To work together. And he picks some of the people that he wants to get to know better. So uh, there's a comedian named uh, Nate Bergatzi coming up. He's a really hilarious guy. Yeah, Steve's son. Steven, yeah, Steven Steven Bergatzi's son. Bergatzi's son. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go see the two of them in Las Vegas in May. You've not seen them perform yet? Uh, I have not seen Steven. Okay. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And in May, uh, he's opening for for Nate at the Win Theater. So. Very good act. Very good act. So, uh, anyhow, great. Thanks very much. So we're, uh, we're getting in line. We're about to have some barbecue. Thanks a lot, Pat. So with the Magic Work Podcast, that was Pat Hazel. Scotty. Scotty.